Hey guys, it's John from Album Review TV. I'm sorry for my absence for about the past week or so. Been through a rough patch. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, or Facebook, or anything, uh, you've seen that uh, I had an accident uh, involving my car flipping over, driving in snow, and uh, I also have been throwing up for like the past three or four days, and I'm finally, like the past day or so, I haven't thrown up, and I'm finally on the road to recovery. I'm sorry if I look like really rough or look shitty right now, but I'm feeling better. I'm getting there, getting my strength back. It's time for a, a anticipated review. I've had a lot of people ask me to do this one. It's a review of Issues debut self-titled record. And you might recognize uh, the vocals on Issues. If you've never listened to them before and you're like, this sounds familiar, well, it's because it is. It's from the guys who were formerly in Woe Is Me, at least the clean and unclean vocalist. Tyler and Michael, the clean and unclean vocalist, started this group after uh, leaving Woe Is Me and Woe Is Me. I guess they were just kind of doomed from the start with a name like Woe Is Me. Uh, they're always losing members, everything always changing up. Of course, Issues have already had many lineup changes. I don't know what it is with metalcore bands, but they are always just going through lineup changes. It's like they cannot get along to save their lives. Anyways, Issues self-titled record is I use metalcore loosely to describe it as the genre because it's honestly all over the place. Things that it reminded me of right off the top of my head, Linkin Park, Lint Biscuit, um, What Was Me, of course, because of the you know familiar voices. Uh, yes, there are definitely metalcore influences and traces here on this record, but it's definitely got a lot of cool outside influences. Scout, their DJ turntable guy, is actually doing a really good job in helping this band stay very creative. That's what adds a lot of, like, I don't know, chemistry to the band, a lot of distinctiveness to their music is the scratching. It's very creative, and like I said, it reminded me of Linkin Park's earlier stuff because, you know, Joe Hahn is their turntable guy, and he's always scratching and adding extra stuff. They even gave him an instrumental track here, an entire track to himself on the issue's self-titled record called Old Dana. Some of the songs can become quite cliched and tired to me just because of the fact that they'll not have that much else going on musically other than a couple of notes being strummed on the guitar over and over again and just kind of feeling like uh, they didn't really try that hard on that specific track. But then there's other tracks like Life of a Nine, Sad Ghost, Mad at Myself, uh, Never Lose Your Flame, Stingray Affliction, those tracks are all ones that really make me feel like, wow, they put a lot of effort into mixing things up and just, uh, just defining what, I guess, rock or metalcore is going to be probably in the future. I like the use of the screams and clean vocals throughout. They're rotated pretty nicely throughout this record, although on some tracks, uh, like the Langdon House, uh, those are just ones that kind of felt like the whole like rapping, screaming, singing thing. It just kind of like made me cringe just because of the fact that that's where the Limp Biscuit thing came in. It was like, oh, are you really trying to do this? I mean, I get it. You're trying to have a lot of diverse influences here on the record, but that's one that just did not pan over well with me. Life of the Nine is one that's really grown on me. I really like the screams on that one. I thought it came off a little bit more passionate than I originally thought. I think the more you hear that track, it's going to grow on you. It's something that's a little bit more traditional in a sense of, uh, I guess, metalcore, but at the same time, it's also pretty creative and it has a nice flow to it throughout the track. Sad Ghost and Mad at Myself, the opening two tracks, those two go perfectly together. Some of the tracks don't all flow that well together, but that one is just a kind of an explosion, a good explosion that is to start off the record. Uh, but things kind of drag kind of in the middle of things. Then towards the end of the album, things pick up again, starting with the instrumental Old Dana, then Stingray Affliction, which was the lead single from this record, Never Lose Your Flame, Personality Cult. Uh, T Tears on the Runway Part 2 is one that just kind of, another one that kind of irks me just because of the fact that it doesn't seem to fit with the rest of these tracks. Some of them just, like I said, feel out of place. Uh, the Langdon House is one that I mentioned. Tears on the Runway is another one just kind of feels like that. It feels like it doesn't flow with the rest of this record very well, and I didn't feel like that much effort was put into this track. One of my overall favorites is the closer, Disappear, parentheses, Remember When. That track is a perfect closer for this record. It kind of sums up 
a lot of the band's influences, a lot of what they were doing, the entire record all in one track, and of course it's kind of one of those nostalgic look back type tracks that kind of like a Day to Remember did on their most recent album, Common Courtesy. I kind of like it when bands do that, take a moment to kind of reflect and look back on uh, you know, since they started to where they are now, and even though Issues has only been going since 2012 and has only put out, uh, you know, like the Black Diamond EP and then, of course, this new full-length self-titled, uh, they're still reflecting over the years of just being a musician, I think, and I think this was the perfect closer. Overall, I, I am enjoying the Issues record, but I don't think it's got a very high replay factor. That's the only thing. I don't see myself listening to the majority of these tracks very long from now, so that's why I'm not quite giving, I'm not quite feeling a 4 on this one, I originally was, but I'm going to go with a 3.5 out of 5 for the issue self-titled record. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments section down below. What were your favorite tracks, your least favorite tracks? Of course, you can check out all the info about the album in the description down below. My least favorites, my favorites, uh, the album release date, and of course, my Twitter, Facebook, blog, comedy channel. Make sure you check out all my links down there as well. Hit the like button on this video, share it with a friend if you did enjoy it, and subscribe to the channel. Help us grow. Thanks for watching, guys, right here at Album Review TV, Beyond the Reviews.